Uh, good afternoon, my YouTube viewers. It is Crystal here, and I'm here this afternoon because I wanted to make a video on how to analyze and forecast on Bitcoin using machine learning. And I'm having to use an online service because my computer is not working that well anymore. And since my computer is not working that well anymore, I'm using a free online service. So I can only use this one page and nothing else. So I have used um, Google Colab to actually write the program. This is Bitcoin. And then I got the uh, Bitcoin off of a Bitcoin website. Unfortunately, I can't show it to you because I'm using um, the free service of Movavi and it won't let me do everything. So the first thing that I wanted to do in order to analyze and forecast on Bitcoin using machine learning is I want to import my libraries, which is Pandas for PD, which creates a data frame and processes data. I want to import NumPy for MP, which creates NumPy arrays and, and performs numerical computation. I want to import date time to timestamp dates. I want to import sklearn to provide machine learning functionality. I want to import Matplotlib uh, to visualize the data. And I want to import Seaborn to further visualize the data. So after I have um, imported the libraries that I'll need, then what I do is I read the data frame in. You see that when we're reading the data frame in, you have a start date, an end date, an open, high, low, close, volume, and market capitalization. So you can use any of those columns that you want to use, but what I decided to use was end and close. Sorry, I've got the hiccups. It's just terrible that I got the hiccups while I'm trying to make this video. So we check the the what type of a data frame it is, and you see that some of the columns are objects like the dates, and the rest of the columns are numeric, like floats and integers. And we check for any null values. And we don't have any small values, so, well, that's good. So we don't have anything to impute. If we did have anything to impute, then what we would have to do is we would have to use pandas to impute it for time series. Now we're going to time timestamp the end column because that's the column of data that we're going to be using. And then so the features in our new data set that we're going to create are going to be end and close. It's going to be called closing BTC and it's going to have the features. And so the two features are end and close, which you can see that. So now we created, we've used matplotlib and here's the code for matplotlib to um, create a graph of the entire bitcoins from 20, let me see from 2021 to 2024 so you can see what bitcoins look like so you can see that they dipped in 2023 but then they're high again in 2024 so if people wanted to buy bitcoins they should have bought them in 2023 when the price was low because now the price is high and uh, you might want to sell them now that the price is high. But I think the best thing to do is buy low, sell high. That's what they say when you're, de when you're dealing with stocks. So now what I've done is I've made a histogram of the closing. And you can see that this is the closing that we made a histogram of. Now what we've done is we've plotted all of 2023 so you can see that uh, what has happened 
is um, what happened is the prices were rising in 2023 or the, no, sorry, the prices were lower in 2023. So I decided I wanted to look at 2023 and see what was happening to the prices. So you can see all of the prices. Now what we're going to do is we're going to check from October to December 2023 because they were going up in October to December 2023. So you can look at that as well. Now what we're going to do is we're going to seasonal decompose the um, the time series. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to additive decompose it. And I looked it up because this is to do with stats models. It says the additive decomposition occurs when a system is decomposed into two or more subsystems with the same dimension as the original system. It is most appropriate when the magnitude of the seasonal fluctuations or the variations around the trend cycle does not vary with the level of the series. So that's your additive decompose. So you can see that. You can see the, um, the graph that the time series makes. You can see the trend. You can see the seasonal and you can see the residual. And we come up here and we'll look at our multiplicative decompose. And a multiplicative decompose is a method of analyzing a time series by expressing it as the product or trend, seasonal and irregular components. Multiplicative decomposition is equivalent to an additive decomposition of the logarithms of the time series. So you can see the multiplicative decomposition. You can see there's the um, time series itself. You can see the trend it makes, seasonal, and you can see the residual. So if you're really into studying time series and you want to see the decomposition, then we've got the decomposition there. And then now what we're going to do is... Um, we're going to, um, this is just a data frame of the additive decomposition. Uh, suppose I could find the data frame of the multiplicative decomposition if I wanted to. So now we're going to extract the features and we're going to take the, um, the date that has been time stamped and we're going to convert it to year, month, day, day of week, and week name. So that's what we're going to do. And then we're going to take those and we're going to call them features. So the features of the data set is going to be end, close, year, month, day, day of week, and week name. And then um, we're going to call it closing BTC dates because, you know, I had to think of something to call it. So this is the uh, data for that we created with and then we took the end and we made it our index and so you can see here it says closing btc dates dot set index is the end so the index is the end and then you've got close year month day day of week week day name i decided i'd put some box plots in here so here's some box plots of the month so if you want to see the activity for each month of the year, you can see the lowest activity is going to be month six and seven, which is going to be June and July. And the most activity is going to be 11. And if you're interested in that, you want to see when the activity is. Also did a box plot on the year. So you can see the least activity was in 2023 and the highest activity is in 2024. And then now you want to check the day of the week and you say each day of the week has a pretty similar activity. Okay, so if you want now what we're going to do is we're going to do time resampling and we're going to resample it for annual 
and that's going to be the end of the year. So you can see that this is the yearly resampling with the end of the year. And you can see 2024 had the most track, most activity. And now we're going to do time. We did. Um, Hmm. Okay, so I think it should be a yes. So let's try it again. Try to rerun it again. So, because it should be resample AS, because A is the end of the year and AS is the beginning of the year. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do it on the beginning of the year. It's just taking a little while to do it. And even said it would take a little while to do it. So that's your mean year closing. And now this is the beginning of the year. So you can see that the beginning of the year, that's AS, looks different, a little slightly different from the end of the year. And now what you want to do if you want to check each month. You can check the activity for each month and you can see that 2024 has a lot of activity. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do rolling. And so we're going to check the windows rolling by 30 days. So you can see that when you roll it by 30 days as it smooths the graph out. The blue, I had to roll it by one day because it wouldn't allow me to roll it by zero days. And then the um, amber is rolled by 30 days. And you can see that um, it's smoother. The, the graph itself is smoother. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do the machine learning part of this video and this program so we're going to do ml features is end close year month day day of week and ml btc is closing btc ml features so this is your ml features and you can see that we set the index to end so the index has been set to end so now what we want to do is we're going to plot the graph from 2021 uh, 0102 to 2023-12. So we plotted the graph again and now we've got lots of dots for each day. And then so now we're going to plot the graph from 2024-01 to 2024-05. So you can see the uh, graph and the points are a little bit more widely dispersed. So now what we're going to do is we're going to split the dates. So it's going to we're going to use time. Um, we're going to use date time to split the dates. So the split date is going to be 2024-0101. And then the split date is then going to be time stamped to make it a date time. So we're going to set the train is going to be less than 2024-0101. And the vowel is going to be less, greater than or equal to 2024-0101. And then we're going to set the index for train and vowel to be the end. So now our Y train is going to be train pop close. And our X train is going to be train. Our Y vowel is going to be vowel pop close. And then our X vowel is going to be vowel. So you can see here's your X train. And here is the X vowel. 
And now what we're going to do is we're going to use the random force regressor to uh, make predictions on the Bitcoin. And so you can see that when it trained the training model, it had a 99% accuracy. And then we made predictions on the validation set. And there's your predictions on the validation set. But when we check the MR RMSC, uh, between the y -val and the y -pred, we had a 33450, which is pretty high. And then so we made a data frame. So if you want to see the actual value up as opposed to the predicted value, you can see the predicted value and the actual value. And you can see that it doesn't look very good. Here is a uh, Metplot Live to plot the um, the actual value against the um, predicted values. The black dashed line is your predicted values and the blue dots are your actual value. So you can see that that's nowhere near the line. And, also, and then um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to use Matplotline to plot the closing price. So you can see we've got the train in amber and the val in blue. And then you've got the green and the prediction. So you can see that the prediction is nowhere near uh, the uh, validation. So that doesn't look very good. And... I'm not sure exactly what to do because I tried to normalize the data to make the data normalized and that just made the outcome even worse. So I just kept that. So the answer to the question is can is can you use machine learning to predict on bitcoins and I don't think so. I mean, you might be able to take my code and do something with it and improve it. But I don't see any improvement in this. So I just wanted to show you my code and do a code review. You've got my code. If you know what I need to do to get the code to work, then I'm open to any suggestions. And so thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please like and subscribe. And I look forward to communicating with you in the next video.